Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Ryan with Iowa Classic Cars and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going up to pick up four classic vehicles sitting in a guy's field. My buddy Austin, who's actually driving today, hey, he bought these four cars. Uh, there's one 62 Chevy, one late 50s uh, Plymouth, I believe it's a 58 with the big tail fins, and then two 64 Impalas. So the first car we're going to day out today is a 64 Impala, two-door hardtop. Um, it's been sitting there since the 80s, and we're gonna resurrect the thing, so stay tuned. Here she is. 1964 Impala. It's a standard Impala, no SS. 327, three speed on the column. Austin's gonna be backing up over here. We're just gonna try to get this old girl out. So the deal is he bought these four cars and I'm basically here today to document this, but also because I'm planning to buy this car from him. So wanted to help get it out of here. But also film for you guys what we're actually doing today. Floors are out of it, pretty standard. Everyone here is Austin's dad. Hello, YouTube. Hello. <laughs> what do you think, man? on the old rims, huh? It'll be fun to get it out of here, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. So the plan here is we're going to try to load it backwards. Uh, it's like, what, 20 degrees today? Yep. So it's probably froze to the ground. We might have to unhook the truck and trailer and yank it out of here, but I guess we'll, I guess we'll see what happens when we get there. So a little more information on this car, but before I do start that, I want to say I'm sorry guys for the wind noise. Um, I thought I had my microphone plugged in and working correctly, however I'm missing an adapter so my microphone was actually never working the entire time that we recorded this video. So this was just recording off of my phone microphone, so I do apologize for the wind noise. In future videos, I won't have any of that as I've ordered the adapter, so as soon as that shows up, hopefully my mic will start working again. With that being said, the reason this car was parked was actually never discussed, but it was parked back in the early 90s. He did buy this car back in 1968, and it was a daily driver up until the late 80s for him. Um, again, I don't know why it was parked, but it you know appears to be all complete in pretty good shape, really what it is. Um, the car has been sitting at least 20 years out in this field. He said a number of times people have actually stopped to try to buy just this car, um, but he wants all the cars gone off the property. So my buddy was able to buy all four cars, and that's basically the only reason why he was able to secure this 64 here was because he was willing to take all four of them. 64 with a 409. And then all, everybody I knew that had them, they, they were just picking up parts in a bucket. Yep, and the, the 409s, you know, I've heard horror stories with the valves floating and, and mm -hmm. bending push rods. And, it was just a 348 with a bigger bore and longer, yep. too long of a stroke. My uh, a buddy of mine, from from where I'm from, uh, he had a three or a '63 with a dual quad 409, uh -huh. you know, four and a, four and a quarter horse, yeah. and uh, he said he was bending push rods so often he put a 283 two barrel on it. <laughs> uh. Yeah, when they first come out of the factory, they can pass anything but a gas station. That's the truth. <laughs> so we're gonna jack this thing up in the in the ass. And then just back underneath it, right? And we're just gonna hmm. yank the front of it out of here. Hopefully, well, uh, I think what I do first is uh, put some blocks into the frame right behind the wheels to keep it then, up. Then let it down. Yep. Yeah, okay. Lift in the back of the jack. Austin, do something in that left front. All right. Use the teeter totter method. Fronts are loose. I feel like a state guy. Four people watching, one guy working. <laughs> we know who's buying lunch. <laughs> I just... 
Yeah, it is. You want to hold this, buddy? And I'll, uh, you want some gloves? Your hands nope. cold? Okay. Yeah, let's we'll keep that, that car in the frame and I'll steer it. Yeah, we can, uh, we'll tug one side and if it goes too far, we'll tug it up to the other side. We'll hold your back. Hold your back. Hold So this is the last section of the video that I'll actually be talking over and the reason why is again the audio was just so horrendous with the wind noise I could not you know crop it out um, and get rid of it. So what we basically did here was we jacked up the ass end as high as we could because the car was frozen on the ground. It's been about 15-20 degrees here in Iowa and the car was just sunk in the ground so long um, you know the tires went flat the car was about halfway up to the wheels in dirt. So when we tried to jack the car up, the entire earth came with us. So we just took you know big crowbars and big two by fours and basically broke the earth away from the car in order to get it freed. Um, once we did that, we put a bunch of two by fours in the hole so that the car could actually slide on top of that. Now, once the rear end was actually out of the ground and, and free, we focus our attention on getting the front end out of the ground. Now, because these cars have an X frame and this thing was sitting so low in the dirt, we were not able to actually get a jack underneath um, the frame really where we, where we wanted it to be. Um, and in the front part of the frame, we just couldn't reach it because it was so far in the ground. So what we did was we took the jack out of the rear end of the car and basically made it like a teeter-totter. So as soon as the back half of the car came down, the weight of the car kind of teeter-tottered the front end up and out of the ground enough so we can get another couple of jacks underneath there and get the thing fully out. So it actually, it's kind of the first time I've ever done that, you know, kind of doing a teeter-totter method. Um, I really never thought it would work, but kind of seeing it firsthand and listening to my buddy, um, you know, he suggested we should do that. Um, we gave it a try and, you know, it turns out it came out pretty easy. So all in all, the day was pretty good. And again, guys, I'm just talking over this because of the wind noise, but start to finish, this took about an hour and a half. Wasn't too bad. The, the wind and the cold definitely made this um, more difficult than it should have been, but still, it was a very fun day. It's looking good. She sat there a while. Now I'm documenting all this stuff just because in 20 years, none of this will be around anymore, you know? I've talked to so you, many- You won't be around? No, I, I will be, hopefully. <laughs> but the cars, you know, this, this experience won't- oh, yeah. uh, I've talked to so many guys, you know, oh, I had a 58 convertible back in the day and, mm -hmm. and crushed it, you know? Yep. Or bought one out of the junkyard and, and those days just don't exist anymore, unfortunately. Yep. All right, so with it being eight degrees out, truck spin when we try to re reposition the trailer. Gonna hook the owner's Duramax to it and yank it to the north, get it more straight, and it should come right on the trailer. In theory, that's what it should do. Yeah. No, you're. We're close right here on the trailer. Try the other winch. Yeah, she's close. But once we're on, I mean, I don't think it's gonna fall off. But once it's on, we'll be okay.
What happened, Austin? We melted the cable off the battery. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> the things you do to save old cars. Uh, that is funny. Hey, so y'all push, push it this way. Maybe, hey, maybe he can hook the truck up again. It's on the wood now, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, we could just drag it right over. We can try to, we can try to pull this way again. Maybe yeah. we'll slide it easier. We'll pull out uh, this way. There you go. That's good, right there. Alright. Oh. <laughs> there you go. She's on.